Well, welcome everyone to another one of our Inner Real Estate Next RE information, landlord information sessions. Thank you so much for everyone tuning in and joining us today. Um, I've got Michael with me as always, but um, just a couple of quick little housekeeping things to, to get out of the way as, as per usual. The first one being Q&A open from the, the very beginning of this presentation. So please feel free to, um, to, to jump in and, and send any sort of questions through that you have. It's just that little box on the top corner there with the question mark in that one. Um, and at this point, I'd like to introduce Michael. Michael, how are you going? Well, thanks, Anthony, and uh, and welcome everybody again. I've um I've noticed that my um my internet's a little bit slow today, so if I'm a little bit glitchy. Um, that might be why. It usually happens at this time of the day at home. I was just going to say the same thing. My screen froze just then, so I wasn't too sure if I was if I was frozen or if, I, if people could still see me still see me moving. But that's okay. Well, um, I'll throw it over to you, mate. How's um how's the last couple of weeks been? Yeah, look, it's been um it's been a pretty interesting couple of weeks. So um obviously we're um we're in our th third week of lockdown here in Melbourne at the moment. For those of you who aren't um, located in the Melbourne metro, um we've thankfully got a little bit more clarification around what the um what the restrictions are, um and and I suppose what um what we're able to how we're able to operate and what and what environment we're able to operate in. Um, I know we came to you a couple of weeks ago now, um discussing a few of those, and there was a few question marks around. Um, around some areas, but um, we've got some real clarity on, on what that looks like now from a, um, a rental and a sales perspective, um, and even the owners corporation as well. There's a couple of small questions that we had around um, minor things like garden maintenance and things which um, have been now yeah, deemed non-essential. So we know that that's um, that's good. Um, but from a rental side, um, you know we're we're fairly comfortable with where things are at. Um, been operating in it um, as I mentioned for about three ne three weeks now in this current environment. So um, yeah, becoming uh, I suppose used to used to the used to the kind of operating conditions that we're in. Um, we've seen some some real success too. So um, you know we've leased. I was looking at the numbers earlier. So we've leased um, eleven properties for August already. Um, we've already got six lease signups booked in for the for the month of September. So um, that's you know obviously significantly down on normal volumes. Um, I think for the month of um, uh, was it month of July we did forty five. Um, so we are we are down significantly in terms of numbers, but um, it's still good to see that transactions are still happening. Um, and that was, I suppose, our biggest our biggest thing coming into this that we wanted to make sure that it wasn't a, a complete stop in all activity. Uh, we understood that it was going to mean that we had to wind back some activity, and and that you wouldn't expect that um, the numbers of leases have been putting together that you'd, you'd see in normal operating conditions, or even under that stage three that we saw through July. Um, but we are still seeing um, transactions happen, which is a which is a good thing. Um, I'm just going to pop up on the screen as well now, Anthony, um, a mm -hmm. slide that we are including on all of our um, rental advertisements uh, at the moment. It's again, taking a little bit of time to come through, so two seconds. It should um, it should be popping up in a couple of seconds. Um, but this is a this is a slide that we're putting up on all of our um, currently advertised rental properties. Um, and this is, I suppose, explaining to the market how we are still um, being able to operate in the current conditions. So obviously there are some pretty heavy restrictions on um, both sales and rentals, but uh, for rentals, like I said, we've been able to put those those um, those transactions together or those leases together over the over the course of the last few weeks, mainly because we've been following this five step plan. Um, it, and it really involves um, one, Making sure that we've got 100% coverage on all of our rental properties that are advertised that are vacant, um, to, that have a um, walkthrough video recorded, um, and I'm very pleased to say, not just my effort or Anthony's effort, but the entire team really got around that as we as we came into this stage four. Um, we'd already done a lot of the hard work anyway, um, because obviously the the you know we recorded the majority of videos, but I know in that last three days there was a huge push to make sure that we. We got 100% coverage, and and we have so for the last three weeks we've had 100% coverage of every single vacant property having a uh, walkthrough video up, which is the first part of that step, um, or the first part of that plan essentially. So making sure that we've got a walkthrough video, so any tenants that are interested in um, looking at the property can can do so, um, and they do so rather than just looking at photos or a floor plan, they're also seeing a walkthrough video, so it feels as though they've walked through the property. Um, we're then asking them to make an application for the property based on the walkthrough video. Um, we then 
um, I suppose assess the application like we would in in normal normal times. Um, so you'd you'd you know process the application, you'd you'd ask for rental references, you do your employment check, you do all of those checks, um, and then we'd ask them to pay a deposit once they'd been approved. So if the if the landlord approves their application um, as per standard process, it's a month's rent in advance, and um, the month's rental for their bond must be paid. Um, but at that point, there where I suppose this process changes or this you know this plan changes in in and is is very different to what we've done in the past is that it's a hundred percent refundable to the tenant uh, without penalty until they actually phys physically inspect the property um so one of the allowances that have been made under stage four is that um start of lease and end of lease activities are still allowed so that means we can still move someone in and they can still sign a lease on a property um so we're using that as an opportunity for them to actually physically view the property sign the lease in person at the property um, but they've also got the opportunity to pull out at that at that particular point in time so um, i suppose there's there's less celebrations have happening when we receive a deposit at the moment because obviously um there is there is that condition that, a, that someone can pull out up until the point that they physically inspect the property um, but the few that we've actually done to date we haven't had any issues with um, i think people are uh, becoming accustomed to this whole online experience of being able to see good quality photos see a walkthrough video. If there's a floor plan available, look at the floor plan as well. Um, so when they get to the property, there really isn't any surprises. Um, so they come through, sign the lease. Um, at that point there, we also ask them to sign a waiver form, making sure that um, you know it's, it's final and, and, and that's it. So um, yeah, we'll obviously keep pushing on with, with that plan over the course of the next, um, next three and a half, four weeks. Um, and hopefully it, it, it ends as planned on the 13th of September. Um, but it means that obviously, like I said, um, anyone that's got a vacant property at the moment, we are still being able to um, do work on that and make sure that we're actually still trying to find tenants where we're receiving inquiries. Um, unfortunately, I know in the marketplace, there are some others out there that are using this as a bit of an opportunity to kind of put the brakes on for six weeks. But um, we can have you, you know, the six weeks of rent that you're not going to receive because your property sitting there on the market without any activity is you know it will cost you six weeks or potentially more on the other side if there's if there's nothing that really happens um so yeah like i said it's been a been a good strategy so far and um and we'll keep pushing ahead with it for the next few weeks yeah. what's interesting well i've got to, I've got to make one final point i think we made this found this comment early days um in one of our earlier um landlord information sessions about how we felt that this the you know the COVID situation is going to you know fast track the, the real estate industry you know 10 15 years into the future so quickly um and i think there's been no more in sales i think it hasn't adapted as, as well as what the, the property management side of things has um it was only before this when you wouldn't approve an application unless they inspected it or a friend had inspected on their behalf um you know fast track to now where we're essentially approving applications we're getting them to commit funds and and, and you know basically commit to the property and sign a lease on the spot if they like it they, they they take it sort of thing so it just it removes all that but it's also it's based off, off the, the fact i've had the good you know professional photography we've got videos we've got all those things in place that makes the customer experience so much more enhanced and better for them it's going to be interesting to see what that's like moving forward if it's that that continues to happen from from rentals if we maybe see on the other side our our rental numbers drop it at opens um, or in inspections and people just opt to, to apply based on videos and, and photos. Um, so I'm sure that we're not going to stop doing any videos on, on properties because we've seen what the success rate's been just through this little bit. I mean, you're just going through the numbers there, 11 for, um, for August and 6 for, for September already. Yeah, yeah, considerably down on, on last month and the previous month, but still it's probably a lot more than what we when what we sort of targeted for coming into this. So, you know, the 19th of August and, and we're at 11 already. Um, and six for next month. You know, it's almost one a day. It's not bad. It's that's that's good going. Mm. Yeah. No. I look. I I completely agree. It's um, and yeah, around the, around the technology piece. I think what we'll see um is a lot more use of technology, um, not only in our own business but but widely in, in the market. Um, we funnily enough, we've got a um a um RIV event um on Friday. We were talking just about that. Um, and we'll be talking a little bit about I suppose the journey that. That we've been on within our business but also uh, you know one of the things that I, i'm really keen on, on looking at is is what's what the next steps are 
um, around that because I think, you know, like I said, like you said, um, you know, professional photography and, and walkthrough videos is something that we're making mandatory on all on all rental properties now, which, you know, only probably three or four years ago would have probably been um, a, a rarity. A lot of people would have looked at that and gone, I think it's probably a bit unnecessary to take professional photos mm -hmm. or, or walkthrough videos for rentals, whereas now it's, it's an expectation. Um, and I think the next step will be, um, you know, potentially virtual inspection. So you, you have your proper 3D floor plan walkthroughs, maybe chucking on a set of I don't know, VR goggles or, or something like that and inspecting a bunch of properties virtually before you actually get in the car or, or jump on a tram and actually have a look at any of those properties. Mm -hmm. um, and I know you and I have spoken about that um, and working with realestate.com on, on how we can come to um, some sort of arrangement where um, we, we do that. We do a 3D floor plan for every single re rental property. So rather than someone booking a time to come and have a look through, they might just book a time to come into your office for an hour and, and inspect three or four properties with a with a virtual headset. Um, so yeah, we'll, we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna be pushing that pretty hard when we're back, um, when we're back, back in the office and, and uh, things kind of settle down a little bit back to normality, but I think, yeah, you're right. I think this has kind of showed us that there's, um, there's a lot more opportunities out there and we need to make sure that we keep pushing and, and making sure that there's, um, yeah, we're not, we're not going by the, the old ways of doing things. Well, it just shows that in times like this where you're not able to leave the house and you know, you're, you're stuck at home but you're, you know, and you're wanting to move and wanting to, to get into the next property, that you don't have to physically inspect um, and, and actually you know, make the time to make that trip out there to, to have a look at it. And it could also mean that you can eliminate from a, from a potential tenant's perspective, what you might mean you could eliminate half the amount of properties before even going out there to look at them um, if they don't sort of fit, fit your needs. I was speaking to a... Um, a potential client yesterday who um and he's showing me the two, two properties that he's got advertised on on the market at the moment and what i he's got one that he's hand drawn a floor plan of, of the apartment but he's marked out where every power point is in the property and tv point um and he's measured up sort of the distances and all this sort of stuff and i said to him this was, was one of the best floor plans that i've ever seen because from a sales perspective we do floor plans but we just show you know, a bedroom three by three, and you know, sometimes that might include the wardrobe or, or whatever, but we don't sort of point out where certain things are. So I think the more information nowadays, rather than probably holding withholding information um, to get that inquiry or get that person to, to send something through to us, I think it's going to go the other way. I think it's going to be more so they it'll be targeted towards making the inquiry towards the agent, and only when they are interested and when they are committed to, to wanting to do something. Um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. For us, it means that we're going to be dealing with more high quality leads than just trying to satisfy all these questions that sort of come through. Michael, the other question I had for you was, um, I know you sort of, you, you answered my first question before even answering it, which was how, you know, how's leasing been over the last two weeks? But the other one was going to be just um, over the course of the last two weeks, have anything drastically changed in, in rentals? Have we seen, you know, high numbers of vacancies? Have we seen, you know, tenants um, requesting rental reductions. How's that? How's the sort of the day-to-day -day life of a property manager been the last two weeks? Yeah, so um, rental reductions, as as expected, they've um, they've come in pretty quick, um, thick and fast over the last um, last two and th two or three weeks. Um, similar to that first round of um, lockdown that we went through back in March, where there was a lot of panic. Um, I suppose again, being having gone through it once before through March, um, we are approaching those discussions. Um, I suppose very differently to what we were back then. Um, you are using the the time that you've been given to be able to um, assess applications properly, making sure that you're using the um, the set consumer affairs measure for hardship, um, doing those calculations. Um, they're not easy conversations to have because obviously, again, you're dealing with people that have potentially lost work. Um, they may not have lost it the first time or they may not have got a reduction in, in pay that first time around, but obviously this has impacted a lot more businesses this time. So, um, you know, you are having those difficult conversations, but um, I, I, I get the feel from the team and even the conversations I've been having with people as well, that it's just a lot more, um, um, not not easier to handle, but just making sure that we're having, the, I suppose, a bit more structure around those conversations. So where you are declining an application for hardship, um, there's there's clear facts behind that. And and because the because the information's been available on the government websites now for a few months as well, you you're easily able to point to you know point to areas that you know you can, that support your what you're stating. So it's, there's no there's no real issues there. Um, but yeah, in terms of volume, it's probably similar to what we what we saw in March. 
um, also those ones in March um, that were actually coming to an end of their initial, you know, two or three month term um, of, of rent reduction. Um, they're now asking for extensions, obviously, as well, because obviously they're, they're impact, impacted again. Um, but again, you know, the government benefits that are, that are on offer at the moment are, are pretty substantial. Um, they are helping people that are in need, um, which is good. So that's obviously helping people a lot as well. And again, you know, the team are informed around what benefits people can, can access through, whether it be through work or through, um, through you know, the ATO, or the JobKeeper and job seeker benefits and things like that as well, which, um, which obviously help. Um, the other question you had around um, vacancy and Maybe. tenants vacating, yeah, um, backed off quite a bit. Um, there was a bit of a mad rush there leading into stage four with, with receiving a bunch of notices, um, but the volumes come off pretty significantly in the last two weeks. Um, and again, it's just that there's just a general reluctance for people to want to move. Um, so like I said, we're seeing our leasing volume down to, you know, probably about a quarter of what it was last month. Um, and it's not because we're not out there trying to lease properties or, or we're working hard to lease properties, it's just because there's just a reluctance for people to move around. Um, I was in the city earlier today for a settlement and um, yeah, the city's just a, a ghost town. Um, and, and that's, you know, it goes back to what the government's trying to achieve, I suppose, of, of keeping everybody inside and not moving around. So um, there is a general reluctance, reluctance to leave. So like I said, possibly a, a good scenario on one side because you're not getting as many notices to vacate, which means there's no real vacancies during this period. Um, but, um, you know, you, you obviously get it slowing down on the other side as well in terms of if there's no one's moving out, um, we're not exactly getting an influx of people coming into Melbourne or Victoria at the moment. So you really are reliant on that churn to be able to lease properties. So if people aren't moving out, people aren't moving in and, and you kind of get that, um, yeah, that, I suppose, that equilibrium that we're kind of in at the moment. Yeah. yeah, look, it's good to. I mean, I guess the first the first round is as um, of, of lockdown sort of was good good training piece for for what what's come around this time. So we've been, I guess, aware of, of what's of what sort of you know happened and, and what's sort of been um, what we were expecting over the next two weeks. What what, what do you sort of expect? I mean, this is probably the we're a third of the way through this um, this particular lockdown, so we've still got sort of four weeks or, or you know that they're about left to go um next two weeks what's the i won't sort of say what's, what's the next sort of six months hold or anything like that what are the next sort of two weeks what are, what are the plans around that yeah so next two weeks um really just more of what we've been doing over the last two or three weeks um so a little bit of a uh, little bit of training so we've, we've been um, getting ourselves upskilled on the uh, residential tenancies act and any downtime that we've, we've had uh, we had Hayley Mitchell who presented to our landlords last week. Um, she's been doing some in-office training, virtual training, of course, um, with the team um, over the course of the last couple of weeks and, and will continue over the next couple of weeks as well, which has been fantastic. So the team are getting a lot about that, getting a lot out of that, sorry. Um, and, we, um, and we're also kind of building out a bit of a training plan, like an ongoing in-office training plan around that too. So that way we, we, you know, we're fully aware of what's coming um, come 1 January, should they be implemented then and they're not delayed. Um, the, the other side is really just getting ready for um, the next, next few weeks. So obviously, you know, more of, more of what we've been doing in terms of, um, you know, leasing, leasing properties where we can, pushing that plan through and making sure that we're, you know, we're following up inquiries as they're coming through. Um, but we've already had a few meetings this week about planning for the last week of lockdown um, and, you know, talking about, um, you know, doing some, doing some proper launches to market for properties that are vacating during this period. Um, there's a few landlords that I've had conversations with that, you know, we've, we've made a decision collectively that it's probably best for them to hold off on advertising their property until, say, a week before we come out of lockdown. Um, and that way we can then schedule physical open for inspections that following week and everything like that. So, um, you know, we're just putting together some strategies around that, uh, making sure the calendars are all nice and full in that last week to make sure that we're, you know, we're, we're clear on, on what we need to do and how we need to, I suppose, rebound out of this. Um, and just making sure that the 14th of September, which is earmarked as the date that we go back to stage three, um, that we um, that we hit the ground running. Um, I know we've we've already spoken as a as a property management group that um, everyone's a leasing consultant for two weeks after that um, after that lockdown gets gets lifted. So we're um, we've blocked out our diaries for two weeks afterwards, and we're just going to um, yeah we're going to try and finish up September really strong and try and and try and lease as many property, properties as we can. 
Yeah, and how about you, Anthony? How's um how's sales tracking? Any um what's the update on on what's been going on in sales for the last few weeks? Uh, look, sales has been for, so for our focus has really been on on you know, just communicating to all our um all our, to our, to our database and and um, trying to find buyers within that. So a real emphasis on on making a lot of calls to to people that have been in in touch um, or have been through open for inspections or inquired on property that last sort of six, twelve months, eighteen months. Um, just to sort of see where where those are at. Um, we do have a number of properties that that'll be coming on onto the market um, after this after this lockdown. So we've got a pretty uh, probably got this stage seven to eight properties launching on the that first Monday on the on the fourteenth. So we're probably similar sort of thing to to you, Mark. We're not going to necessarily put properties on the market during this this four week the remaining four week period. Um, we'll probably look at doing that sort of the last week or or that Monday coming out. Um, and making sure that all our properties are, are, are ready to go, um, and then making sure that our our calendars, like you said, are, are fully booked that that week coming out of this with a heap of inspection, buyer appointments, um, and trying to get people through. It's been actually pretty promising um, over the last sort of seven days that we do already have a few property inspections booked in for that um, that week there. So that my Monday, Tuesday already is fully booked um, with people. So. Initially, there was a couple of people that said you're booking inspections five weeks down the track. You know, um, what do I, I don't even know what I'm doing tomorrow, let alone five weeks from now. Um, but it's been good, so we'll obviously keep in touch with those people to make sure that they're still interested and in, in, in keeping them interested in those properties. Um, and also, there's been a bit of a, um, a lifting, a lifting um, drive this last couple of weeks as well. So we've listed a fair, a fair few properties, which is really exciting. We have sort of seen, I guess. On the sales um, market coming into the last lockdown, so there's a couple of sales that are now being sort of reported in that last week. We are seeing prices come off at about five percent, um, which was expected to sort of happen over over this sort of period. Um, it, it had been it's been doing extremely well to to hold up from sort of March when this had happened, and, and all the sales that were sort of being made were were pretty much thereabouts. There wasn't too much fluctuation in price. Um, but we just started to see a couple of properties that were sort of selling for probably about 5% below what they would have, say, six months ago. Um, so it'll be just interesting to see where the market comes out of this and how it does recover um, and whether it sort of takes off um, from here or it sort of gets, keeps a flat line for, for a little bit while that you know buyer and, and urgency sort of comes back and, and consumer confidence. So. We'll obviously monitor a lot of things over the next sort of two weeks, but for us, it's um, still heads down um, and, and making calls and, and just trying to find as many buyers as we can for, for our owners that, are, that have decided to sell. And um, and just talking about the market as well, you were um, you were quoted in the financial review uh, last week as well. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, so, yeah, thanks for that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I got got a phone call out of the blue, um, and my reaction to to the phone call was pretty much like the reaction to this, not expecting that it was that it was coming through. So, um, you got a, got a call from a, a journalist just wanting to to be quoted with regards to uh, listing numbers coming to to market. So, um, Core Logic came out and and had produced numbers saying the apartment market hadn't seen drops in prices, um, and they'd put that down to to low levels of of um, listings coming to market. So I just wanted to get a quote around that, which was pretty much spot on. So we'd, we'd probably seen early sort of days. Um, I remember sort of May, June, we had pretty quiet months in terms of lease uh, listing. Um, and when I say listing, that's properties that we've, that we've signed up on an authority that they, they, they're wanting to put their property on the market for sale. Um, but we then we saw a huge sort of drive and of sort of July or, and then this month as well. And June was a pretty good month for us as well. So. Um, we probably, and it was a bit of an interesting one because she was sort of asking the questions about, you know, listing numbers down. Um, and then once I got the phone call, I had a look at our listing numbers and we're on at the moment, we've listed 80% of what we listed last year. So last year as an office, we listed 52 properties for sale. Um, and at this point this year, we've already listed 46. So we're on track to have a big listing year. Um, so hopefully that results in a, in a big sales year in terms of, you know, being able to sell a lot of these properties. But we're probably not affected as much as what other agents are. There are a lot of agents out there that are saying that we don't have listings and those sorts of things. So we're extremely blessed and grateful that we have got big listings and we've got some coming out of this. Um, our focus is really around making sure that we get good prices on those on those properties and really start working buyers because, um, you know, we've seen this market too many times before where 
you can start carrying some listings, but you know your buyers aren't there, so you've really got to start working your buyers as hard as as hard as ever um, to make sure you can get those deals across the line. Yeah, and I, and I suppose that's the that's the benefit and the beauty of, of our marketplace being um, being apartments. We don't really see that huge fluctuation in price that um, the suburban markets do. I know um, you know I look at comparable periods of. Um, you know, say the, the peak of 2016 um, in the normal resi market and then um, then it coming back off in, in 2018, 19 and then kind of bubbling away that it has the last few years. The, the apartment prices have remained fairly constant. Um, I know in your, your quarterly reports that you released, um, there, there isn't really any too many shocks in terms of price. There's always, I suppose, there's a fluctuation more in um, the number of properties that come to market. But but price seems to remain fairly constant throughout. Is that is that a fair statement? It is. You, you, the, the fluctuations that we see are in the median price pretty much stays the same. Like you'll get that that fluctuation of maybe five ten percent depending on on what the market's doing. Um, but our big fluctuations come in the number of sales, a number of listings, and then days on market. So the, those are the sort of the ones that we look at. So if we look at the quarterly report that we that we did for um for last for the second quarter. There was half as many sales um, on that were sold in in that, in that second quarter of the first quarter, um, and off and also we had probably about a 50% increase in days on market. So properties were staying on the market for longer, which meant that you know it was taking them longer to, to, to sort of sell, and then obviously the numbers of, of sales dropped, and then off the back of that our listing numbers increased. But it wasn't as if the listing numbers increased from 20 to 40; um, it, it only increased slightly. Um, but it was really just the, the the number that had it had increased was actually the number of sales that would have happened normally. So it was only I think an extra 200 listings um, in that quarter higher than the previous quarter, and that was the number of sales that it was different on. So yeah, yeah. And then um, just another question, Anthony, around the sales. Um, so similar to rentals, we've got some, we've got some clarification now in sales on. Um, why we're well, what we're able to actually do. So I suppose reasons for us to to leave our homes. Um, it, sometimes it can be a bit um, bit unnerving. Um, a- Anthony and I had a bit of a rendezvous in a car park last night to drop off some face masks. <laughs> which, I'm not know, sure you're able. I'm not can, sure you're able to tell people that. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, no, well, we we, that. <laughs> we ran into each other in a car park. So <laughs> what a coincidence. Um, no, but I know it can be a little bit unnerving. Um, you know, around what what. You know what we're allowed to go out for and and, and what we can um I, look i know i've um attended a property settlement this week and i, I just got back from a, a pre-settlement inspection so they're two things that are happening what what other um reasons can um i suppose sales agents be out there on the road at the moment and, and what what work can they actually do um, outside of their own homes that's really it so we can only attend uh final inspections and we can only also only attend settlements, so handing over keys or, or collecting keys from from an owner and, and passing them on to the new purchaser. Um, so that's really about it. Um, I had a valuation, so a bank valuation last week that that I attended, um, which was a bit interesting. So I thought they weren't able to to do it, but they gave me all the reassurances that they that they were and that we were able to do it. Um, funny enough, I actually got stopped by the police on the way home after that appointment. They're like, "Where were you?" I said, "I was just doing a." Um, an inspection or a file. I just said it was a final inspection and it was fine. Um, there's no, no no fines come in the mail yet, but essentially that's the only two things we can leave for really is um, a final inspection or a pre-settlement inspection. Um, so tonight I'm actually heading off after this to go do a pre-settlement inspection with a with an investor, um, which is strange. And I've said this to a lot of people that, that I've been sort of talking to over the last um, sort of seven to ten days. It's been that the last lockdown we at least were able to to move move and go out and, and still show properties and, and do all that still. Um, and pretty much I took it as an opportunity to work from the office every day last time. I, I don't think I'd really work from home much at all because I was sort of in the city and, and showing properties and doing all those sorts of things. Um, where this time it's I'm literally confined to this room that I'm in at the moment um, because everyone's sick of hearing my voice in the house and being loud and, and, and talking and constantly walking around, apparently stomping around um, while I'm on the phone. So um, that's really, as, as sales agents, what we're able to do is, is make phone calls, um, you know, keep in touch with people, drive some emergencies to, to some properties on the back of this, um, and then attend any sort of final inspections or, or pre settlement inspections that we've got. So not a lot we can do sort of face-to-face, um, but a lot that we can do online. 
So we can still do virtual appraisals. So if someone's living in a property and um, you know wants a, wants an idea on price, we can you know set up a time like this on, on a Teams call and they can sort of walk us through their property. Um, so we've done a couple of those, um, and we've also can just do I guess you know um, having one-on-one -on -one chats with buyers and and going through particular properties in in detail with them online. So yeah, there's still a lot that we can do. Um, really, anything that we can't do is attend attend a property physically. Yep. Yep. Um, and Anthony, just a, one last question I had was around um, auctions. So I know um, you know we've we've had um, a few online auctions over the over the course of the last few weeks. How are you finding um, how are you finding those? And I suppose how are they how are they being conducted? Because we can't even do an online auction. Um, and we, we this was one of the, another thing we got confirmation from. But even if it's a um, unoccupied property, so a vacant property, um, we can't actually conduct an online auction from that property. We have to conduct an online auction from our own homes. Um, how are you finding that? And are you are you using that as a bit of a tool coming out of this, I suppose? Because I know we've done, um, I suppose, the um, the group in-room in -room auctions in the past. In-room auctions, yep. um, is, yeah. Is that something that we, um, you know, as a, as a group and as sales teams, that's something that we'll be looking at doing and, and using um, a lot more in the future? Yeah, so yeah, definitely. So we, we've actually had one, we've got one scheduled for tomorrow night, um, an, an online auction. So we're just getting our sort of final registrations coming in at the moment for that one there. So we initially had um, seven properties due to, to go up on that on that online auction that for tomorrow night. Um, one's been withdrawn, just paperwork wasn't wasn't in place, ready to go in time, um, and three others were, were sold. So we've only got three going up for auction tomorrow night. Um, which is which is great. So you know, it was, it was a really good, basically fifty percent success rate, um, even before sort of conducting the auctions, which is awesome. Um, and of those those three that were, were due to go up tomorrow night, um, it's a bit of an interesting one. We're, we're getting a bit of mis, mis, um, a mixed bag of, of feedback from from people. So some buyers are, are interested. They they want to they want to do something on the property, but want to have another second look through it. So that's sort of more so first home buyers not really wanting to commit without sort of seeing it a second time, which is fair enough. Um, that's, you, that's completely understandable. Um, and then you've also got some other investors that are just you know, wanting to sort of see what the market does over the next sort of six to, six to 12 months. Um, so yeah, that they work really well. Definitely something that we'll, we will continue on doing and, and, and promoting pretty heavily and, and definitely on the other side of this and, and once, we, once we come out, um, especially with, with being able to do multiple auctions in, in one night or, or in one setting um, and where you've got majority of our purchases don't live within you know even sometimes even in the state um, but you know sometimes our owners are overseas and, and our and our buyers are interstate or or in regional areas and, and different parts of, of victoria it's a great way to bring everyone together on on, on one platform um, and the platform that we use is teams so we we send out a teams link similar to what you would have had received um, to, to join us t today on this on this call. Um, and then we just simply uh, record the bids. We'll announce which property that we're auctioning that at that point. Um, we'll give a little bit of a spiel about that particular property uh, and then we'll open it up to bidding. Um, everyone that is there for that particular auction will have a registered bidder number and would have pre-registered for the auction. So no one can actually attend unless they have registered beforehand. Um, and that's just to make sure that we we capture all the information and we know exactly who's there, so we're not getting any bids from people that we haven't even spoken to before and, and got no idea who they are. Um, and then once we do sell a property, um, we've just signed up with an, an amazing program with, with that's called Real Time Agent, which is we're able to sign contracts on electronically and send them for offsite signing. Um, so we don't even physically need anyone in the room to, to sign off on contracts. Everything can be done electronically. Um, and then we also then get the 10% deposits to be transferred into into trust. So um, it's made, I guess, from from a sales perspective, this is probably what's changed the most. Um, not so much the the marketing side of it, but the way that we we transact. Um, I was having a conversation um, with someone the other day. And I was just sort of going through what what we do and and how we're sort of doing the new things. And he's like, well, what do you mean we don't you don't have paper contracts anymore? You know, isn't it, don't the bank sort of ask for those? And, and don't, isn't that what you know what the banks are require? Don't you need to give them a, a physical hard copy of a contract? It's like no, no, don't have to do anything. It's all electronic. It's all, it's all fine. So um, that's just completely changed it, um, and it's easy to use. I, I had I had one of our clients um, who 
doesn't think himself as, as tech savvy at all. Um, he signed a copy of the Section 32 and fine and, and sent it back and had no issues in, in doing his digital signature. Um, and he said, well, if I was able to work that out and do that, he goes, you shouldn't have any issue with anyone else doing it. So, um, yeah, just making sure that we've, we've got real easy programs to be able to, to adapt to any sort of market. So we've signed up a few offers on these on this um, real-time agent platform and they've worked really well. There was a couple of glitches at the start, but that was more so, you know, us being the users of it. Um, but once we sort of got our heads around on how to how the, the, the app and program work, it works really well. So in a roundabout way, I don't know, I've gone on a bit, a bit of a tangent then, but um, online auctions, definitely something for here, that will be here to stay. Um, and I think we'll even probably do it by, once we are able to go back out into the street and do public auctions, I think there'll be an element of it that will be online as well. So I think we'll still have a camera set up that's recording whether I'm the auctioneer or whoever's on the auction, um, and then streaming it into into Teams where people can log in and, and view that auction and, and bid off, off that as well, so, because they'll be able to, to register their interest and, and register as a bidder beforehand. Yeah, no, that's great. That's really, really good. Um, yeah. I bet you, I bet you hanging out for that time to be able to go, go back out there and, and stand out on the street and call an auction. It'd be, um, I'm, I'm hanging out for that first auction so I can just ring that bell so loudly that neighbours in the <laughs> suburbs out come come out and, and see what's going on. But no, we're we'll, definitely looking forward to, to doing that. No, that's great. That's great. Well, I think we might, um, I think we might leave it there, Anthony. I think, um, I think we've covered off on on quite a lot already today. Um, oh, hang on, I've just um. Just just dropped. Yeah, I think we've just dropped out. Hang on. That's um, right. I'll, I'll just, just put up our details while, while, you're, um, while you're doing that. I'll just yeah. pop, our, I'll pop our details up so we can... Um, right. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah. I don't know. So there you saying. go. So all our details are up there on, on, on that. So um, as always, if you've got any questions or, or wanting to, to reach out to Michael or I, um, please feel free to do so. Our mobile numbers and, and email addresses are on there. Um, but as always, um, stay safe, keep well, and we'll, um, we'll be sure to speak to you in a couple of weeks' time. Thanks for joining, everybody. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you.